Hey, 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 Superior Shea fans, other humans. It's Thursday, 2 of March, uh, 7.35 in the evening. I really did not expect to hear the old noisemaker out there uh, for my other professional client, uh, commercial building uh, neighbor, but oh well. I guess I'll have to deal with that for however long it runs, because I need to shave and I can't wait. So this is... Uh, I shaved on Saturday, didn't I? I thought I shaved on Saturday. This is only six days of growth, but it's driving me completely crazy over there. And so I'm going to use the Theophil Berthon shaving soap. This is the one that comes in this disc, this big white disc. And I'm going to use this French shaving brush. It's a no-name brush, however, it's not. The knot of badger hair is not from China badger hair, it's uh, Malays Malays from Europe, for whatever that's worth. It doesn't really make a huge difference, but it is a little bit different. And um, for the razor, uh, this was supposed to be mailed last Saturday to uh, a man <clears throat> in Quarriesville, Pennsylvania. So let me just tell the story correctly. A week ago, Tuesday, via eBay, the man from Quarriesville, Pennsylvania, purchased a Dovo Sunday shaver, factory sealed, along, along with uh, other customers buying things. That Wednesday, I packed orders and I made a mistake I haven't made in a couple of years, which was to uh, print this, the, this, the successive label without clearing out the name first. So I don't know why the postage softwares, none of them do this, all they would need is a little thing to say, are you sure you want to print two labels in a row to the same person? And for you to prompt and to, to confirm that, and then the, you couldn't make this mistake. But between packing the wrong thing, mailing the wrong goods to the wrong person, missing something, and uh, just putting the same label twice, and then the second person, the, 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 the first person gets two packages when they should have got one. That's the mistake we made here. But uh, I found out about it on Friday, uh, when the parcels delivered to the customers and the nice gentleman who was honest n notified me that he got a Sunday shaver when he didn't pay for one. So uh, I was doing my tire job at that point and he emailed and I read the email and then when I, when I got to the office at night to pack the orders, the customer from Quarriesville, Pennsylvania had said, hey, you shipped it to the wrong place. I responded very nicely, hey, no problem, I'm sorry, I'm so stupid, blah, blah, blah. Explain why the posted software could solve all that. Uh, and I said I would fix it in the morning, meaning Saturday, a week ago, or six days ago, the day I shaved, uh, that I would pack up his order by priority mail, as I did here, and get it promptly in the mail on Saturday. And so he would get his thing, you know, Monday, let's say, five, five days, five working days after he ordered it. Well, the next morning, Saturday morning, the guy goes straight to the eBay kangaroo court and files a complaint and says, Hey, the guy mailed it to the wrong place. I want a refund. All right, okay, there's your damn refund, you wanker. So I will never do business with that guy, and I can't believe that he was so uh, unreasonable. And I was going to take the razor that the other guy mailed back to me, if he did mail it back, and give it to him for free. Uh, two for one. But anyway, he'll get none for none. And you just saw me open this. This is a factory sealed Dovo Sunday shaver and I'm going to shave with it just the way it is. I'm just going to strop it first. So first let me take off the ballast all that's on there. You can use really hot water if you want to do that but I want to strop right away. And now I'm going to pre-shave wash with this disc from Berthon. That's how they recommend you use it. And I might just use a drop or two of the uh, Osma pre-shave oil, which we'll have in stock at some point, maybe in the next month. So you're about to see a Dovo factory edge, which we all know is never shave ready, versus what can only be described as a coarse beard. <laughs> a couple of drops of the old, old Osma pre-shave oil. Now let's get that inexpensive badger brush working this up. All right, we're at five minutes, Jared. Let's move it along here, move it along. The noisemaker stopped. Can I put a plug in? Uh, 
I'll put an Amazon link for the noisemaker in the description of this video. But you don't have to buy the noisemaker. If you want to help me out, all you gotta do is use that link and complete a carding, complete a shopping session at Amazon.com and I will get a hefty 1% commission from your purchase. Which, let's face it, when you're selling tires for a living to supplement selling straight razors for a living, that means you need it. This soap, when it's brand new, has a wonderful woodsy smell. However, I have had that puck, I don't know, maybe five years. So it works just the same as it ever did. But even I, with not much of a nose, I can tell that it's... The first thing a soap loses is its peak fragrance. Especially the more transient notes, like citrus. You'll be hard-pressed to find a long-lasting citrus parfum. Something about citrus, I suppose, makes it the domain of the top notes and hard to make it as the base notes. Uh, but you know, when you put it when you put it in a shaving soap and the shaving soap it gets old, you lose that citrusiness. That's, I'm going to stop with this here. So I put this behind my strop, and this is shaped to about seven feet. Now I'm going to take the much longer shaped piece of wood and put it behind this piece of calf eye. So I thought it would be a good stroke of fate to uh, shave with that razor once with the factory edge, and then I will go uh, concave the razor bevel the way that you've seen me doing all my videos, and then give it away. So, in some video here, you'll have your chance to earn it for nothing, you little cheapskate bastard. If this doesn't feel right, I will immediately bust out uh, my coticule that's shaped uh, like uh, 25 feet diameter down the long axis and six and a half down the short. But as you can see, it feels great. So that just proves they're never shave ready. This edge is shave ready according to Dovo and according to me, but if someone else buys it, and decrees it not shave ready, they are not wrong because there's no such thing as being right. It's just a bunch of subjective bullshit. And that area is, is very, very coarse and thick. And they just plow through it like it's nothing. How much better do you want? That lather's a little rich.
will be a good basis of comparison when I touch this up the extreme convex honing way and then shave it with it a second time. And I suppose I should wait about a week again and you all use the same soap again. Almost done with the first pass. I happen to know, at least during the time of this razor's production, precisely what abrasives and steps and diameters, approximately anyway, uh, Dovo used to hone this razor. And I must say that versus my well concave Sunday shaver, also in redwood, that I've used countless times. Uh, my other copy feels more electric because it's thinner, but this actually it feels smoother. They finish on ferric oxide paste that is imparted to a horse shell strop and I don't know how old that horse shell strop is, but it does not look young. If you search the videos on the internet from the late 90s, you might see them using that strop. You know, it's about three inches by 18 inches and uh, It has a very similar color to that horse shell over there, which is not quite three inches wide. Well, how much better do you want it? Because that's pretty damn good. Not bad for a man of modest motor skills. I'm just putting some rubbing alcohol on there. And I'm going to wipe it off and let it dry out. And now let's get to putting the alum stone on and get her get a better analysis of how Jacoby did on that shave. I would say it's in the B category. It, it felt very good. Um, you know, I'm a tough grader. In the mustache zone, it's it feels extremely close from that wipe down. Uh, same areas that I struggle to get close here and here. And I feel like if I took that same blade to a barber 
and they have the massive advantage of the uh, the barber's chair and the floating shoulder. Like I went to get my teeth deep cleaned in anticipation of my braces here at 50 years old, and um, the lady was. I, I am a devout flosser, okay? Am I the best flosser in the world? No. But I certainly give it a damn good try, you know, 25 times a month or something like that. And the lady was talking to me about flossing and showing me as she's flossing. And I was just thinking, yeah, in this soliloquy about how to floss perfectly, she has me you know, my head is facing straight up to the ceiling. And her shoulder is movable relative to my face. So she's not stuck in this position looking at the mirror. And she can put her damn shoulder any way she wants. So of course it's going to be easier for her to get everywhere and to do it very thoroughly. The degree of difficulty has been reduced. Okay, this is Leah Classic Aftershave, made in Spain. After a long, hard day slinging tires, I love a good alcohol aftershave. Oh, yeah, that's good. Now to get some alcohol into my body, that's where it belongs best. Unfortunately, I don't have any of that right now. But that can be remedied at any store. Now, I will go stop the video. We're at 19 minutes. Hey, that was pretty quick. 19 minutes, in and out. Okay, never shave ready. Don't forget that. Okay, watch next time, uh, next shave. I will give that razor away, and you cheapskate bastards can sit there and do whatever it is I tell you to do, whatever hoop I tell you to jump through. You jump through that hoop, and then you'll win that razor for yourself, okay? Hey, thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.